In last month's grapevine, we were lucky enough to share in some of the fond memories that visitors, that staff and volunteers have of the National Trust's vine estate here in North Hampshire. Well, this month I'm going to be revisiting the memories of one volunteer in particular because Simon Hemmons proved to be such a font of knowledge about this historic site. Well, I think the first thing I would like to say is what a, a warm and friendly house the vine is. I was struck by that when I came here as a visitor many years ago for the first time and I'm still struck by it every time I come back now. And I think that is probably because down the years, it, and it's been a family home now for coming up on 500 years, the families here have had a pleasant, uh, happy life. For example, the man who built it, William Sands, he and his wife had a, a, a lifelong deep love affair and they were known for being very much in love. And that has come down through history. There's even a rather nice little doggerel, piece of doggerel. My Lord Sands, my Lord Sands, lift up both your hands and down on your knees and pray that when you come home from France you may lead out the dance with good mistress Marjorie Bray. And Marjorie was to be his wife. If you come a bit further down, you come to William John Chute in the 18th and 19th century. He founded the Vine Hunt and he had a huge sense of humour. By the way, he didn't do much for the house and he did absolutely nothing for the estate, but everybody loved him and he had this wonderful sense of humour. And in the 19th century, the family had 11 children and the rather cold stone gallery was the playroom for these 11 children. You can imagine the laughter and the running about and the toys and they also put on plays. So it was a particularly warm and welcoming. They used to invite the village and the estate workers and the staff, fill that room with a hundred people for two nights to put on their play. And I think that's um, really rather a, a spectacular example of how these people lived here and were very happy. And the last owner and his wife, they had a boys' school here during the Second World War. They didn't like their headmaster very much, and they liked his wife even less. But they loved Sir Charles and Lady Laura, who were incredibly kind to them. And in spite of Sir Charles's burden of work with Hampshire, which he was running more or less single-handed during the war, they spent a lot of time making sure that the boys were happy here and well cared for. And I think that's rather super. And I'll, I'll end with one story. We had a very elderly lady round one day who turned out to be a member of the Chute family. She was a great niece of the last owner's wife. And her mother had been supposed, that was the family idea because the Charles and Lady Laura didn't have children, her mother had been supposed to marry a nephew of Sir Charles. No direct relationship, of course. But the mother had her own ideas and didn't. But the idea would have been that they would have married and then they would have inherited the house. So I said to this old lady, goodness me, if your mother had been a good girl, you might be showing me round your lovely house now and not the other way around. And her reply in a great booming voice was, dear boy, thank God. <laughs> My thanks to Simon Hemans there. And if you too would like to learn new skills by joining the thousands of volunteers working at the hundreds of National Trust properties across the country, then follow the volunteers link at www.nationaltrust.org.uk. Bye bye.